Frame of motion has become quite popular in the last few years for 2D animation, mainly because it has a very easy to use API. Uh, you can see my previous videos on frame of motion and how to build complex animations relatively easily. Now I'm looking at an example on their website, uh, and if you if I play this animation, it will sort of scale up and re revolve. And if I look at the code for this, uh, all you're doing is uh, you're prefixing a motion uh, 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 to a div element and then you uh, then you get features to animate it so so then you add these attributes initial animate and transaction and give it some values like a scale zero to and scale it up to its actual size and you can also rotate it and things like that so that's uh, how easy it is to animate uh, elements now, as well as animating in 2d you can also animate in 3d so uh, i'm looking at the documentation site here here and if, if uh, on the left hand side, if you go down, there's a section on 3D and it tells you how to uh, use frame of motion uh, to animate in 3D. So basically what it is, you know, it tells you how to install it. And basically you're uh, it's working on top of 3JS and React 3 Fiber. And then if I go down and it tells you how to uh, 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 animate elements, uh, it's the same process as before as I mentioned earlier. And if I go down, there were some examples here. Uh, so this example here, if I click on this uh, counter, it's got this uh, 3D revolving star. If I click on it, it sort of flies and it hits the counter. So if I run it again, so it flies and hit the counter. Okay, okay then there's also this animation here. It's uh, animating a, a ball, which is going up and down. Now talking of 3D, uh, uh, big brands are using 3D to showcase their uh, products. Uh, as you can see here, uh, furniture companies uh, use uh, the, uh, 3D models to uh, showcase uh, like sofas and things like that here. And you can also configure the color and things like that. Okay, and this is another example of Nike shoe. As you can see here, you can view it in any angle and uh, you know uh, nike also uses configurators to uh customize uh, uh their shoes for their customers so these 3d models uh come in uh different formats and one of the popular formats is uh gotf format and in this video i'm going to be showing you how to animate uh, a got format file uh 3d model uh with frame of motion 3d Okay, so uh, GT GLTF file format is basically a sort of a JSON file and it has uh, things like scenes and nodes and cameras and animations and then you can break these down and sort of inspect it and manipulate it. So that's what we're going to be uh, doing in this video uh, with Frame of Motion and uh, the React 3 Fiber. I just want to mention, uh, that, you know, this comes in two flavors. Uh, you can also have a GLB uh, uh, format which is a, a compressed format so it's basically the same thing but it's just it combines all these fi uh, binary files and JP jpeg files into one file so uh so that's what we're going to be using a uh, glb file which is basically the same as a gltf file but compressed so in this video i'm going to be showing you how to animate a 3d laptop uh, as you can see here uh, and you can open up the laptop by click on the button and open up the laptop and you can sort of inspect it in different angles and, and zoom in, zoom out and uh, view it close up and you can also close it. Okay, as you can see, uh, the, the lid is uh, animated and we're going to be using frame of motion for that. So it will toggle between open and close and then you can zoom in and view it in different angles. And even in the close position, you can view it different angles okay so i've made other videos on uh, uh working with gltf files uh you can also watch those videos and if you want to see more videos like this please subscribe to my channel and let's get started so i'm in vs code and i've already run npx create react app and as you can see i've got uh, the basic uh, uh, app uh, set up already okay so what we're going to do is i'm going to just clean up uh, the files that are uh, i'm going to get rid of the files that i don't need so i'm just going to delete this setup dot uh, setup tests i'm going to delete this logo svg and i'm going to delete uh, app.test okay, i'm going to delete this report uh, with my tools 
Okay, I'm just going to go into the index.js and delete this uh, report web vitals thing there. And I'm going to remove that report uh, vitals from there as well. Okay, and then I'm going to save that. Okay, then I'm going to go into the app.js. Okay, so so what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the, the app.css and app.js. So in order to do that, I'm going to go to the GitHub um, uh, for this channel. And as you can see, I've got some starter files here. So I'm going to copy over the app.css from here. So I'm just going to highlight all of that and copy. So I'm going to go into the app.css and select all and delete and paste it in there. So I've got so I've got this CSS for 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 this uh, demo. And, and now I'm going to go into the app.js and I'm going to copy the app.js from there as well, from the source directory. So I'm going to go into app.js and I'm just going to copy all of this over and paste it in there. If I save it. Okay, so so basically what, what this is, is um, I've got a form with a toggle switch on there. And I've got a sort of a, a, a state to uh, uh, to control the uh, the toggle switch. Okay, so if I if I go to term if I save this and go to terminal new terminal and just do in npm run start. Okay, now if I go to the browser, okay, now this is uh, what is showing in the browser. So I've got a little toggle switch there, and that that's what this. Uh, this uh, code is doing okay so so in the app.css I've got some styling here for the layout as you can see here the container with some flex layout and then I've got a preview area this is where we're gonna put the 3d laptop and then we've got some footer there footer is gonna contain that uh, toggle switch so all this is the styling for the toggle switch okay so so what we're doing here is uh, we're hiding the input field, which is the uh, checkbox, and we're sort of giving it a custom uh, styling here. That's what we're doing. So I'm not going to go too much into the toggle uh, switch styling. So that that's what it is. Okay. So if I go to the app.js, I'm just going to go briefly. Uh, so I'm going to go over the the, the markup for the uh, for, for our demo. So uh, we've got a sort of a main container there. And then within there, we've got a preview where we're going to put the 3D um, uh, laptop, and we've got a footer section there, and that's where we've uh, we're putting in the switch, uh, the toggle switch there. Okay, so uh, so the toggle switch has an info field, which is basically a checkbox. And as you remember, I've um, uh, you know we took out the styling for the checkbox, and we put in a custom styling. So. So this is the this is the actual sort of um, uh, you know the thing that controls the uh, our toggle switch. Okay, so uh, for the input field, it's the type is uh, checkbox, and we've got a checked attribute uh, which is uh, which we're controlling it with a, a state variable. Okay, so and on click uh, we're changing that uh, state. At, we're toggling here. That's what uh, we're doing here. We say set is open to is open, and we're doing the uh, not uh, operator there, so it's it's toggling between you know true and false. So as you can see here, I've got a constant is open, and uh, comma set is open. So we're we're uh, defining a, a state there. Okay, is equal to use state, and we're initializing with false. So if we do a console dot log, the is open, open is with a capital O. And we do save and we go to the browser. Okay, I'm just going to do the inspect and check the console. Okay, so so when we toggle, we're going to see the the state change there. It's uh, consoling out the console log out the uh, the state. So we've got false now. So we've got true now. False true. Okay, so that's what that uh, what we're doing. What that code does. So uh, so we've got a state variable. And um, and it's it's open, and then in the toggle switch, uh, when you click on it, it it, it toggles it uh, between the two different states. Okay, next we're going to be installing uh, React 3 Fiber, uh, Motion 3D, and another library called Dre, which is uh, 
And a related to React 3 Fiber, and it adds more uh, advanced features to React 3 Fiber. Okay, so I'm going to go to the view and go to my terminal. Remember, I was running the server, so I'm going to bring back uh, that to terminal screen. And then I'm just going to Control C to uh, stop the server. All right, and then I'm going to be installing here. So it's to install Frame Emotion 3D and React 3 Fiber, uh, we can do it in one, one command. So uh, we're going to do npm install. It's going to be a three, and it's at React three hyphen fiber, and it then it's going to be Frame Emotion three D. Okay, so I've already run this, so you need to run this. And to install Dre, it's npm install, and it's at React. 3 and it's slash Dre. Okay, and that should uh, install the Dre library as well. So once they installed, then we can uh, add it to our application. So once you've installed uh, all the necessary libraries, uh, you should be able to use it in your application. So in order to do that, uh, you have to import the necessary modules. So I'm just going to paste in the things that we're going to be using. So uh, first of all, from uh, React 3 Fiber, uh, we're going to be importing the canvas module. Okay, then from uh, React 3 Dre, uh, we're going to be importing use GLTF uh, uh, module, which uh, allows us to import uh, external uh, uh, 3D models because we're going to be importing a, a model of a, a laptop. I'm going to be using perspective camera so that uh, we can view the uh, 3D model. And we're going to be using orbital controls, so it allows us to uh, rotate the camera around the 3D object. Okay, and from uh, Framer Motion 3D, we're going to be uh, in, uh, using the Motion module. Okay, uh, remember Motion is spelled with a lowercase, uh, whereas uh, all, all the other modules, uh, except for use GLTF, is all capitals. So be aware of the uh, the use of caps there. So once you've added all this, uh, you can save it, and then we should be able to do some simple testing. Okay, to test out uh, React 3 Fiber, uh, what we can do is we can go to the React 3 Fiber document site. Uh, I'll leave the link for this in the comment section. Okay, on there you got your f on the left hand side. Uh, there's a link to your first scene. If I click on that, it tells you how to set up. Uh, you know your basic uh, uh, setup for your first scene. So. Uh, so it explains, you know, you need a canvas element, right? And then also you need a mesh element or a component. Okay, and this will have all the information that you need to render your 3D object. Uh, so it has some maths involved like geometry and uh, uh, the material um, uh, that it's made of and things like that. It's like the surface. Okay, so, and if you go down, then also you're going to have uh, lights. There are sort of different lights that you can use. And uh, here they're giving an example of an ambient light and a directional light. And if I go down, it will say the result. And uh, so here you, you have a basic sort of uh, a code that you can actually test and see if it's working. Okay, so I'm just going to copy this. So it's got a canvas there and it's got an ambient light and directional light and it's got a mesh and it's got a box geometry. And if I go down, it's got this little gray <coughs> box shown there. So Basically, this will uh, uh, render this. I think uh, it's got a red light here as well, so I think this is probably outdated. Okay, so uh, so if I copy this code and then paste it into our code, so I'm going to paste it in between the preview wrapper. Okay, so I'm just going to tidy that up. Okay, so then uh, I'm going to save that and I'm just going to start the server now. Okay, so I'm going to do npm run start. So if I not go to the server now, okay, so I'll do a refresh just to make sure. Okay, so I see a sort of red, red uh, box there. So we know it's rendering a, a 3D objects. Okay, so at the moment we can't do much with it, but we know it's working. So I'll just go over this code again. So uh, wh when you're working with 3D objects in React 3, uh, you you always use a canvas to render your 3D objects. Okay, so you always start with a canvas. 
and then you have some lighting okay so i've got ambient light in there and it's got this intensity uh, the strength of the light uh, set it to 0 0.1 okay and we've got directional light and we've got color red there uh, and we have, we have a position there so in in 3d space uh, all positions have like three uh, three coordinates so it's like the x the y and the z so uh, 0 0 is x y and 5 is uh, z okay and then we have a mesh mesh is uh, the 3d object so the mesh would have a sort of a ge geometry the, box, the mesh will have a geometry, uh, which will be, uh, in, in this case, we've got box geometry. And the geometry will be like the, uh, the coordinates and the mathematics and how to uh, create the skeleton structure of the uh, 3D object. And then you have a, a material. Uh, so here we've got mesh standard material. Uh, so the material will have uh, things like the color, the texture. So it's what brings it to life okay so so you have the skeleton structure and you have uh, some uh, visual uh, um, uh, uh, information about uh, color and texture and things like that so that's that's the mesh so I'm gonna make some changes to this uh, we're gonna be importing a, a 3d model of a laptop from externally using a GLB file and uh, so we're gonna uh, I'm gonna do some preparation uh, in order to do that so I'm going to replace the direction light with point light. So I'm going to say point light. And it's going to have a position. Position of uh, equals to curly brackets. And I'm going to say, uh, and it's, it's an array. And it's going to be 10, comma, 10, comma, 50. Okay, and it's a closing tag. Okay, then I'm not going to have the mesh. I'm not going to be using a mesh here. Okay, so instead we're going to be importing a uh, uh, a component for the laptop. So we're just going to put a, a dummy component there. Lap. I'm going to call it laptop. It doesn't exist at the moment, so I'm just going to place it there. Okay, then we're going to have a perspective camera. Okay, and the perspective camera will have a position. And it's going to be equals to, and it's going to have a, it's an array, and it's going to be 0, comma, 0, comma, 20. Okay, and it's a closing tag. Okay, and then also we're going to have uh, orbital controls. Orbital controls. Okay, and that's going to have a position. Oops, position. And it's going to have, um, it's going to be an array again. And it's going to be uh, 0, 0. Oh, uh, orbital. Yeah, we're not going to have a uh, position for that. So the orbital, minute, it's a closing tag. All right. So orbital controls uh, is it allows you to uh, 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 rotate the camera around the object. So when when you sort of drag the mouse around, it will uh, it will it will view the object in different angles. Okay, that's what the the perspective camera is. Uh, you need a, a camera to view it, and uh, when you want to give uh, position. You want to position the camera, so you need perspective camera for that. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to be using a GLB model uh, that was uh, created uh, from an external application. Uh, I used Vectory to create. Okay, the GLB uh, format is a uh, it's like JPEG, but it's uh, uh, it's for 3D uh, visual objects. So I made a video on uh, working with GL, GLTF and GLB files. Uh, they're both similar, or well, one's uh, one's more compressed. The GLB file is uh, one file which is all compressed, whereas GLTF file is sort of cons consists of uh, the images and things like that as well. Okay, so um, you can watch that video uh, to get more uh, in-depth uh, knowledge of uh, working with GLTF files. Okay, so. Uh, 
So for this demo, I've created a, a laptop uh, in uh, 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 an application called Victory, which is a uh, online uh, application for uh, uh, creating 3D uh, objects. Uh, so I've, I've, I've found an asset for a laptop and then I've done, done some modification here. Okay, so as you can see here, I've got a, a top level uh, folder, uh, which is a laptop. Then uh, the laptop's got a lid. Uh, which consists of a screen and uh, uh, other things like rubber and screen back. Okay, that's 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 the top part there. Okay, then the bottom part consists of uh, keyboard, touch panel, and body, touchpad, etc. Okay, so so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, importing this into uh, React, uh, and we're going to be uh, animating the lid. So if I just so we're going to be sort of if you see the lid going up and down, so. Uh, we're going to be rotating the X uh, on the X axis. Okay, that's what we're going to be doing. So, um, so I just wanted to show you the structure of this. And uh, then uh, also I've exported this out already. So you don't need to uh, do anything. So uh, in, in this uh, in Vectory, you can do a export file format. And I've selected GLB. Uh, you can do GLTF as well. Uh, but GLB is what we're going to be uh, using today. So for this demo, you can access the uh, the the GLB file uh, in, uh, in in my GitHub uh, um, repository, and it's under Laptop 3D Model. And if you go into the Laptop 3D Model, there is a Laptop GLB file. So just uh, go to the top level. Okay, so that's the top level. So I've got a Laptop.GLB file there, and when I click on that. I have an option to download it. So I've downloaded it already, so you can you can get access to it here and download it. I'll leave the link in the comment section. So I've downloaded the file already and I put it into a, diff, uh, a separate directory. And as you can see here, now uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna run a utility called uh, GLTF uh, JSX, all right? What that does is it will read this file and then it will create a component that we can use in our React app. And that component will allow us to um, uh, look at and uh, modify things within the 3D object. Okay, so uh, so I'm going to first go into a uh, uh, command prompt. I'm using git bash here. You can use the Windows command prompt. But you've got to be in that directory. Okay, and then you've got to run uh, npx. It's gltf. Uh, JSX, and you've got to point it at that uh, file, which is laptop.glb. Okay, and this will uh, create a, 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 a JavaScript file, and then uh, that will contain a component. Okay, so it's done that. So it's uh, it's saying that it's. Um, it's created a, uh, a laptop.js file. Okay, so now uh, uh, if I look in the directory, it's got two files now, and uh, as you can see, it's got a, a laptop.js file there. Okay, so what we're going to do is first we're going to copy over this the GLB file, and uh, remember the the GLB file has got that uh, sort of a, a black icon there. Okay, don't confuse it with the JS. Okay, so we're going to just drag this into the public folder, okay, in our app, okay. So then I'm going to open this up. I'm going to just right click on it and click on edit and it should, uh, and we're going to edit it in uh, uh, Notepad. So uh, as I bring it over here, okay, so this is what it looks like, okay. So what what this is, it's, it's a uh, React component. Okay, and it and it uh, it's loading our uh, our model from the uh, public directory. So it's uh, and then uh, it's got these sort of layers of uh, um, of the the three D model. Okay, so it's got this group, and then we got this group here, which is the lid. Okay, uh, as you can see. Uh, well, it's got these uh, names there, which is like nodes dot screen nodes dot black in it, and it's nodes dot. So this is sort of <clears throat> telling you what it is. So this group is the lid. This is what we're gonna be uh, uh, animating, okay? And then you got the keyboard there, 
and touch panel and all the other uh, parts of the laptop okay so what we're going to do is uh, so this is a component and we're going to be copying over all of this okay so we don't need this we I think we already imported that uh, we can just make sure so first we're going to just copy this uh, so it's going to be the export function and we're going to say right click copy and then we're just going to paste it into our code oops so I'm going to go back to our app.js okay so I'm just going to put it at the top make some space okay so uh, so so we're going to call that laptop laptop okay and then now uh, we're going to uh, so it's loading is is using us you use gltf and it's loading the uh, the model the glb file from the public directory so we don't need to change that okay so if i save this and let's just go to our browser okay so uh, we can see this black uh, uh, a panel there so what it is is I think if I if I use a mouse scroll to scroll out okay, zoom out and you can see it so what that means is we've uh, the camera is too close so we can adjust that if I go back and so it is this uh, model is loading so if I adjust the camera which is this perspective I made a little mistake here uh, uh, the perspective camera should be spelled uh, with a capital P as a component. So it's a perspective camera, okay. And also, I need to make uh, this default. And the way to do that is uh, you say make default, okay. So make default is with a capital D, okay. So this actually makes it uh, default because there's already a, a default camera with the canvas, uh, but we want it to use this instead okay so if i save this made these two changes and save it and go to the browser okay there you go so so i can sort of rotate it around and look at it okay so so we've loaded the uh, the model and it's working uh, it's a little bit dark so what i can do is i can uh, increase the intensity so I just give it something like 0.8 Okay, so ambient light, uh, just make the intensity a bit more. And check it out. Okay, so this, this looks much better now. Okay. So, so I just want to, going back to the code, I just want to go over what we've done so far. Okay, so we've imported a GLB file uh, using a utility to convert the GLB file to a component. And then we've copied that component into our app. So in this component, you can see we we're using you you use GLTF GLTF hook uh, to load the model, okay, and we're extracting out the nodes and materials. So so with the nodes and material, we are reconstructing the the 3D model here. That's what's happening. Okay, and remember we've copied the actual 3D model file, the GLB file, into the public directory here. Okay. So that's that's the uh, structure of the code. So uh, as uh, as I mentioned earlier, you know, you, we, uh, we've got these group elements and uh, we've got these mesh elements. Okay, the mesh elements are the actual geometry of the uh, the 3D uh, assets or you know those little parts. So uh, this is the geometry for the keyboard, and this is the touch uh, panel ports, etc. So so these are the geometries uh, as sort of the skeleton structure of uh, that's what the meshes are and the groups are we're just grouping it together so for this for uh, for the lid we've grouped uh, the whole uh, all the parts of the lid here so then we can do some sort of rotation to it so we can just uh, 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 do a, a rotation here so if, if I say rotation equals and it's going to be a uh, open close curly brackets and it's going to be uh, uh, an array of uh, three values so our rotation has uh, uh, an x uh, rotation on the x-axis y-axis and um, uh, the z-axis so if i put zero 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 
Okay, so this this will be the, you know we're not doing any rotation here. So if we're gonna uh, uh, rotate on the x-axis, and we have to put in a value here. So the, the values are not um, you know e easy to under their uh, angle values uh, in radians. So and to work it out, you have to use uh, formulas. Okay, so uh, there's there's a formula that I'll just copy and paste here. So so for the x. Uh, value the first value. I'm going to just po paste in this value. Let me just okay. So paste it in this value here. Okay. So this this value, you know, we've got this uh, pi function and divided by 180. Okay. And the first value uh, is going to be the angle. So the angle times mass pi divided by 180, and it will actually this will give you the value of the actual angle so the angle is this and but we want the angle in radians and so this formula works out the angle in radians okay so this is zero uh, degrees okay so if I save this and go to the browser okay okay there's no okay there's a zero rotation okay so if I go back and change that to 90 so this should be 90 degrees rotation okay so as you can see, you know, we've got, it's rotated 190 uh, degrees here. Okay, from the original position, which is like around there. Okay, so that's that's the rotation. So if I go and make it 180, okay, and do a refresh. Okay, so this is sort of 180. So this is sort of, you know, in line with that, uh, I notice that you know that there's a gap here and things like that. That's because there's a, in, when you apply the rotation, uh, you have to adjust the the bottom part as well because it, it's rotating around uh, a, a sort of an origin which you can't see. So they're the things to be uh, aware of. Uh, uh, the coordinates and things like that uh, you have to sort of uh, fiddle around, play around to understand you know how it's doing it. But generally, you know, the rotation is you know you work out the angle like that. So, but you don't need to remember that. I'm going to be pasting in this this formula, and we're just going to change the angle. So now, now we know that you know you can rotate it. So you can rotate the we're rotating the lid here. Okay. So I'm just going to delete that rotation, just that rotation part. Okay, and save it. Just make sure it's it isn't. Uh, messed up anything okay so it's back to normal right. so that's how you rotate uh, uh, the uh, the parts of the uh, the 3d model so uh, so we've done a sort of basic rotation here and it works okay so but we're going to be uh, doing animation rotation with a uh, frame of motion 3d so a as you recall we uh, loaded we're using the frame of motion 3d library and we're going to be using the <coughs> motion uh, uh, a module all right okay so if i go to the frame of motion website okay so uh, so this is a, just a recap on how to use our frame of motion uh so it, as you can see here we've got this sort of animation and if i play it it rotates and uh, uh scales up okay so if i click on that the code for it so uh so in frame of motion uh, uh the way you animate things is you prefix the element with a motion dot as you can see here and then you have these attributes initial animate and transition uh, which uh, which are sort of animation uh, uh, settings that you you apply to that uh, element okay here uh, the scaling from initial to zero from zero and then a rotating 180 and the scaling up one uh, at one factor okay that's so it's it's going from the initial to the animate state Okay, and it's, it's got a transition um, of like a spring, uh, which is the, you know, the type of animation that is going to be applied to it. And it's got some settings there. Okay, so uh, so that's the basic of, uh, you know, using frame of motion. And, uh, and the 3D, uh, frame of motion 3D uh, is uh, similar the way you use it. And uh, I'm not, so it's got a different, uh, if you go to the document site, there's a 3D section there. That's where I'm. What I'm looking at here. Okay, so uh, so uh, it's uh, uh, it tells you how to use it here, how to install it, and uh, generally you, you can uh, you can hard code the 
animation uh, values there like this or you can use variants uh, which is sort of a, a you know you're you, you're uh, referring to a uh, uh, you put your settings in a sort of an object and then you sort of refer to an item like hidden uh, for the initial it's supplying the hidden uh, uh, settings here and visible is the animate state okay so so you can put it into a variant or you can hard code it like this Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to just uh, uh, add it, uh, we're going to hard code it in just to test things out. Okay, so we're just going to do an issue and animate state. Okay, so if I go back to my code, and uh, so we're going to prefix the, the lid, so with motion, motion dot, and the end tag as well, motion dot, okay. And then we're going to put the attributes here. Okay, so so we've got the positions. So I'm just going to tidy this up. Okay, then uh, so we're going to have initial. Oops, initial equals curly brackets, and it's double curly brackets. We're going to hard code it in. And then oops. And then we're going to have animate equals double curly brackets so we're gonna we can just put in that values here so if I say x uh, 0 and then the x value to 150 or something let me just see if you go to if I save it and go to the browser you see it slides out there so it, it, it comes from here and it slides out Okay, so that's a basic animation. So if, if I do add a transition equals to double curly brackets, and we say uh, delay not two seconds. And if I save that, go to the browser. So there's a delay there. So we can see it. There you go. Okay. And you can also say duration, duration, uh, one second. And if I play that, there you go, it's, it's slower. So if I do a refresh, there you go. So I'm just moving it around. So just do that again. There you go okay okay for our specific uh demo uh, we're going to be rotating uh from a closed position to an open position so we're going to rotate the lid from a closed position to an open position okay so uh, so initially it's going to be closed and in frame of motion 3d uh you can't do the shorthand rotation like this where you can uh uh, uh, specify all three values in one sort of array. <clears throat> uh, in in Frame Motion 3D, you have to uh, specify it by uh, uh, rotate X, rotate Y, and rotate Z. So if I go back, so uh, the supported values in uh, you know in the documentation that says uh, you know these are the things that uh, you can specify X, Y, Z, scale scale X, Y, uh, X, scale Y, scale Z. And rotate x rotate uh, so there's no shorthand for rotate okay so going back so knowing that uh, we can say um, uh, initially we're gonna delete that I'm gonna say rotate uh, x and uh, it's gonna be uh, colon and we're gonna apply that uh, formula that I uh, pasted earlier so just gonna paste that in here again. It's uh, so the the first uh, number is the actual angle. So in a closed position, I'll, I'll say uh, ninety. Okay, and we're gonna animate to something like uh, so. So animate to rotate, rotate x. And we're gonna say we're gonna paste, and we're gonna say rotate to 
zero. Okay, so so this this should start from a closed position and go back to a, a rotation zero, which is uh, so you're rotating from the initial position. So that say if zero is the uh, the initial position which is open. So if I save that and do a refresh. There you go. Okay, so just to change the angle, right it's there. So it's starting from the closed position, then rotating, and it, it sort of adjusts itself to the base. Okay, so but when when you when you when you rotate it uh, on a closed position, it uh, 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 you know the base goes down a little bit, so you have to adjust for that. So further, I think uh, we can we need to change that to something like uh, uh, 105. I think that's more of a position of a closed uh, laptop. Okay, so if I refresh that. Okay, so. Okay, so that's more because that's more parallel to the base, but we need to move it up. So, so that we keep that for the time being. And then if we need to adjust it later. Okay, so it's starting from a closed position and then animating it to an open position. Okay, so what we can do now is we can put uh, because we we're gonna uh, we're gonna do some adjustments and add more uh, values. Uh, we're gonna be changing the x, y, z values as well. So uh, and as this gets more complicated. Uh, we can uh, abstract this out using variants. Okay, so the way to do that is we need to. Uh, so I can just go to the document site, and they're using variants. Uh, let me see. Okay, so they got variants here. So initial, hidden, animate hidden, and and this is how you tell that um, uh, you know we we're using variants. Uh, we say variance equals variance, which is the actual object. So it's a constant. There variants and we've got uh, items hidden and visible and these are the settings for hidden and visible so we're abstracting out hidden and visible into a variant okay so that's what we're going to be doing okay so we, we're going to say so if I go to the top and I say constant equals variance equals it's an object Oops, got an equal here. Okay, variance equals okay, it's an object. And right, then now uh, we're gonna have we're gonna have an open position, which is an object, and a closed position, which is also an object. It's a comma there. Okay, so then uh, in the open we're gonna have this. So I'm just going to copy the rotate part into there. Okay, and in the closed, I'm going to copy that. Rotate X for the closed position. Okay, then what we need to do is we need to just replace that with uh, uh, inverted commas and cl uh, closed. And then I'm going to replace that with inverted commas open. And the final thing we need to do is we need to say, uh, oops, after transition, uh, we're going to we're going to say very variance equals, and it's. Uh, Open close curly brackets and its variance. Okay, so if I save that, and this should apply the same uh, animation. So starting off with open, actually. So uh, so that should be a. Uh, the other way around, so it's 105, 
and it's zero actually so, so that, that's I just copied it wrong so that should be yeah, just change the zero uh, one or five there and swap those numbers over okay so that so the op the closed position is uh, 105 degrees uh, radians okay so if I save that all right so if I refresh so it's closed then it's open and refresh close and it's open okay and if I go back and look at the closed position okay the closed position is uh, so if I go back I'm just going to temporarily put that animate to closed okay so just to uh, just to so that I can explain what's going on okay so I do a refresh so now it's not it's not running the animation okay so I can just explain what's happened here okay so we've done a rotation and it rotates around a sort of an origin which is sort of around here so this this uh, when it rotates the the, ba the base uh, uh, rotates it changes position okay the, the bottom of the the lid so we need to reposition it again with the x y and z position so if I go back and in the closed position I'm gonna add another item well another three it's gonna call it x and I put it at zero then comma y which is zero okay and then z which is zero okay now now what 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 we have is we've given x y position at zero so we know where the zero is okay so the origin of it okay so I do a refresh just make sure okay so so that is the zero position so if we go back and then and what I found is I had to sort of fiddle around with different numbers like I put in like a hundred for the y and then save and that, that and that sort of moves it back that way and then if I do like a Z uh, uh, 50 or something and and that sort of pushes it up so I'm sort of getting close to getting it parallel to the base unit so uh, by trial and error I found out that uh, the, the the numbers that uh, 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 correctly closes it is uh, y is 75 and z is uh, 2.84 oh sorry uh, 39 39 sorry okay so if I do that save that and okay so now now it's it's closed it's, it's a very sort of a uh, compact and it's closed okay so tightly closed with a base unit okay so what I've done is I've done it by trial and error I've set it to zero and trial and error and just figured out what the coordinates are uh, so when you're working with these models uh, sometimes you know there's rotations and orientations which is sort of a bit hard to uh, 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 understand so you, you can just do trial and error and just find out what's happening okay <clears throat> so I'm gonna put the animate back to open now okay so open so I just did that to sort of explain things and work out the figures okay so okay now it's animating okay now the now we need to adjust the because it, it animates from the close to the open position but but then the uh, the position for the open position has changed okay so so what we can do is we can so to fix the x y position for the open uh, state uh, what we can do is that we can uh, uh, luckily we've got the original position for the open position here uh, that uh, that uh, when, when we exported the model uh, there was a reference to it in the actual position attribute of uh, the group so we can we can use that uh, as the open position so so that, that, that that's the x y and z okay so so that's what we're going to do now all right so i'm just going to put a comma 
after the rotate for the open state okay and then i'm gonna put x it's gonna be uh zero zero minus zero point uh minus zero point zero three comma okay and then uh, y is just copy that 11 points 111.69 and then the comma there and then z and z is 2.84 okay so just uh try to that up i'm going to put a sign that up okay so 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 we've got to rotate uh uh rotate x and then we got an x position and y position and z position okay and same for the close okay so now if i save that and then refresh okay so so if i rotate it around okay so okay so so that's that's positioned nicely there okay So uh, always remember, you you, you know you got to do a bit of trial and error to find out uh, exactly how to position these things in 3D space. So it takes a little bit of practice, but uh, uh, you know uh, trial and error is the best way. So now we have uh, our animation running nicely and uh, it uh, rotates nicely and it's uh, positioning in the correct position. Uh, so uh, the next step. We need to do is that we need to make it uh, uh, run when we uh, uh, click on the toggle switch so currently it uh, the animation runs automatically okay so in order to do that uh, we, we can go back to the toggle uh, button as, as you recall we've got a, a toggle button there and uh, you know it's it's working it's on a on click uh, event you know, we're setting a state there okay and and we've declared the state uh, at the top there is open okay so we can use that is open uh to in our laptop model okay so i'm going to go back to the the app and in the laptop um component uh element we can uh, say and we can add an attribute called is open is equal to open close curly brackets and is open okay so we're just passing that state uh, to the laptop model so then i go back to the laptop model or component okay and i'm going to go to the definition and uh, we're just going to replace this we're going to put curly brackets there and we're going to say props uh, destructure the props and then at the beginning we're going to say is open comma okay so so we've got a is open comma then we're destruct we're destructuring the props as well okay so if i do that and then so we we should have the state available so it's open is capital o all right so we got the state there so we can use this state in our uh, uh, in our jsx here so uh what we need to do is we need to toggle between the open and close animation so if it's open then we need to um, animate to the closed position if it's uh, closed then we need to animate to the open position depending on the state so to do that uh, we just do a ternary here saying is open and then is question mark and then uh, we say so if if is open is true then we say open otherwise it's inverted commas closed okay so this this is all we need to um, uh, toggle between the open and closed states so if i save that and go to the browser just do a refresh so now if i click on toggle switch and it opens or we'll close it so open so it's working nicely so i hope you like this video and uh, if you like more videos like this please, please subscribe to my channel and see you in the next video